the very first thing they ask you is, when's the next Supra coming? We see the, this vehicle as kind of a superhero for the brand. From a designer perspective, this is always our dream. This is Calti Design Research, the Southern California-based design studio for Toyota Motor Corporation. Many automakers have similar studios in the area, mostly as think tanks and advanced concept workshops to give their designers a chance to be free from the shackles of headquarters thinking back home. But ever since Calti was formed in the late 1970s, the first such studio in California, it has been given a far more important role in creating Toyota's production vehicles. Calti's first assignment was the 1979 Celica, a big departure for a company known for building tinny econoboxes. It was such a hit that the company moved from a small office near the Los Angeles airport to its present digs in what was mostly farmland near the border of Newport Beach and Irvine. In its 40 years of existence, Calti has been the styling fountainhead for many vehicles you see on the road today, including the first Lexus Coupe, the first Toyota Prius, the Toyota FJ Cruiser, and the Tundra full-sized truck. But Calti has also been the germinating seed for concept vehicles that eventually came to market, a couple of years ago, Calti's top designers saw a gap in the lineup, a sports car. What we're really lacking right now in the Toyota brand is a halo car. We thought this kind of car, FT1, is the perfect uh, car to attack and get some more appeal in our, in our halo area that we've been lacking. The lack of a high-performance sports car could be placed on a number of reasons. The sour economy, the strong yen making an imported Japanese supercar too pricey for the American market, and the commitment of Toyota's engineering resources to fixing consumer claims of sudden acceleration in their vehicles. But in early 2012, all those trends showed signs of easing, and Calti president Kevin Hunter decided to make a pitch to top management in Japan to create a concept sports car. There is a lot of enthusiasm, especially in the U.S., for this kind of car. And again, there was a big void left when production stopped some 15 years ago on Supra. There is a strong, strong desire for another car like this. Toyota hadn't sold a pure sports car in more than a decade when the Supra became too expensive to keep in the lineup. Certainly there had been sporty cars, such as the Scion FRS, but no vehicle designed to be a spiritual pace car for the brand. The Supra had been an essential component to the Toyota lineup for 20 years, leading the performance image for the brand, eventually reaching supercar status with its fourth edition in 1994. But a slow economy and a high price tag doomed the last Supra, and Toyota shelved the car in 1999. Despite having $30 billion in the bank, Toyota has been known for conservative decision-making. But CEO Akio Toyota, the scion of the company's founding fathers, had shown signs of reversing that conservatism. A race car driver at heart, Akio had proclaimed Toyota would build no more boring cars. Hunter played to Akio's emotions in his pitch, noting that super owners are among the most loyal Toyota brand devotees. I think he really understood that point, and we put together a video, uh, went out in the world, went to uh, car meets and, and, and owners clubs and super clubs, and, and really pushed that point hard. And uh, it really resonated with him and, uh, and, the, and other top management. So I think that got them on board thinking, well, you know, maybe there's something here, and I think, of course, it's in line with where he's been pushing Toyota to go. Uh, so I think there was a natural fit. With permission to build a concept granted, Calti designers went to work. The first key decision, what kind of sports car should they create? What we really want to do is make something authentic and make sure that when the driver engages in, the, in this car that they feel it's set up from a performance point of view from a driving point of view and a racing point of view. To get a sense of the existing competition, the entire studio spent a day at Las Vegas Motor Speedway driving the world's finest exotic cars. It gave them a sense of what kind of car they wanted to design and what sort of ideas to avoid. One thing that struck me is um, when we drove the 458 Italia and a Porsche 911 is that those cars are really set up for track use and their history is racing. And when you look at where, for example, their A-pillars are positioned, they're back towards the driver. So you have good cornering visibility out. And the Ferrari is really beautiful and, and sensual, and the Porsche is a bit more businesslike and, and mechanical, and, and they have different characters, but I thought there was a common uh, trait there that they both exhibited. 
Uh, by com contrast, if you look at a, a Lamborghini Gallardo, which we drove, it seems all about fashion. And the A-pillar being way forward really cuts down on your visibility quite a bit. Um, and just feels a bit more like a, a, a super high-end fashion statement. You didn't want to create sexy in the classic vein of, say, uh, a Ferrari GTO or something. So we had to make sure that we're still pushing the envelope of progressive, modern, and feels like a Toyota. We wanted something that had good balance from an authentic proportion standpoint. So long bonnet showing power, um, cabin back, you know, perhaps some wraparound glass, um, you know, something that had really good muscular stance. So you know, those kind of rough ballpark things we're looking for. And, and the next thing is how do we do it in a different way? You know, how, how do we do it in a new way that, that looks like it fits the times today or you know, even down the future? Everybody had a different image um, what this car should be, you know, which uh, I think the market is that way. It's, it's very personal. You know, there's Ferrari guys, there's Lamborghini guys, there's, you know, uh, GTR guys, there's Corvette guys. They all have a different perception of what the sports car means to them. And then we saw that through the entire um, kind of realm of sketches um, when, when we had our first sketch show. There's some brand separation that we consider too because Lexus has LFA. Um, I think people just saw the LFLC um, show car as well. And I think we see Lexus as kind of a mysterious type, a little bit more mysterious development. Um, transitions are seamless. And for Toyota, you know, we felt that it should be clear, it should be bold. There wasn't really one idea that, that stood out as having everything uh, that we felt this car uh, uh, represented and, and fit our mission statement about where it was going. So we ended up um, using a lot of different ideas from different designers' uh, proposals. Once the sketches had been assembled, it was time for Calti's modelers, basically sculptors of cars, to create a slew of 15% scale clay models to give an idea of the way various concept ideas might look. Various ideas were combined into four 40% clay models. Meanwhile, computer-aided design terminals helped ensure the car's dimensions were correct to the nearest millimeter. One thing we really wanted to focus on is stance and make sure that it felt very muscular and powerful. In the lineage of the 2000 GT and the Supra, those cars always had uh, inline sixes and it created a certain architecture and a certain hood length and focus to the power, power being to the hood. So we're not saying what kind of motor is gonna go in this car, of course, but we felt that from a design point of view, we would like to continue in that, in that vein of, uh, of that straight six uh, proportion. But how much could Toyota draw on its past? That was the subject of many heated discussions among the designers. It's difficult to bring back what was there in the past um, due to regulations and so forth. And I think those type of cars should be you know, well left alone. And, and what we could do though as, as designers to create a new concept is to capture the essence you know, the essence of the, of the cars, the essence of what that meant in that era, the authenticity of that era. You know, there was a lot of advances in technology back then, but um, it's, it's still missing a lot of the requirements that, that are necessary to make cars safe today. Um, and, and that really plays a lot into what the final car looks like. We like to think of this car as being shaped by the wind. And if you look at uh, the movement of the surface and the way that their openings cut into the surface, for uh, cooling requirements uh, in the front, in, on the side, and then air outlet requirements for uh, aerodynamics. We tried to take all that into consideration as we're uh, crafting the form aesthetic uh, so that it really makes sense as, uh, as a high performance uh, car and it really enhances those, those key fundamental elements that make a sports car. Meanwhile, Calti's interior designers were hard at work with a new vision for how the interior of a concept sports car should work. Calti Chief Interior Designer William Chergoski explains how Calti reimagined the dynamic between car and driver. You know, in this moment of flow when you're driving at speed, you lose a lot of the interior. In fact, you lose the meters generally because they're below the steering wheel. So we really wanted to kind of create something that was kind of uniquely, I think Toyota, kind of high tech, and really uh, take it in a place meters in a place they haven't been before. This also kind of coincided with some research that we had done at uh, Miramar a few, a, year, a few years back and we drove a, uh, we flew a simulator and the, the heads-up display there, it took all the primary information and brought it into a point where even at a point of attack you're looking right through it. So as you're driving 
you know, through the apex, or whatever, you're looking directly through the information that you need to be accessing at any given time. Out of that, I think you have the, the chance to kind of interact with, you know, theoretically deep level things, but do it at a very quick, shallow level so you can keep your eyes focused on the road. But it was more than just the human machine interface. Kalti also wanted to experiment with new fabrics and textures. This is a superhero. So, you know, what did superheroes look like? You know, say, you know, Toyota has a history of sports cars. You know, back in the day, superheroes like Batman and Robin and Superman, you know, they wore spandex. But you look through the history of kind of how their uh, costumes evolved as sports cars have evolved. You know, there needs to be some kind of transition. So you look to modern day superheroes and instead of spandex, they've got these kind of great woven leather and they almost look like armor. There's something, you know, very deep and uh, they're multi-layered. So we try to apply that thinking to our superhero here, to the interior uh, materials. Uh, the IP, the steering wheel is, has this you know, fantastic, it looks woven, but it's actually an embossed leather that kind of conveys that same level of precision and protection that you, you, know, you can imagine on you know, Superman's you know, chest or on Batman's armor on his arm. Uh, there was some kind of you know, real interesting kind of parallels we felt between what those cars, what this kind of car means and what you know, their outfit means. Finally, it was time to mill the car for full-sized exterior and interior bucks that would be taken to Japan for management approval. Kalti then had about six months to take those models and turn them into, for all intents and purposes, a fully functional prototype automobile, just in time for the 2014 Detroit Auto Show. If you look at the front of the car, it's very wide uh, through the track, and the cabin comes in tight and snug around the occupants and then continues to taper to the rear, and then the rear uh, wheel flares are hung way out. So there's a really great uh, rear three-quarter view uh, to this car. You want it to feel outrageous and advanced and exciting, yet it has to have a level of grounding to it that, the, that it's authentic enough that you can say, yeah, as a person, when I get inside there, it feels right. You know, it doesn't feel like a Hollywood prop or something that, uh, uh, that's impossible. Which leads to the final question. Will this concept become a reality, a production car you can buy for that targeted $60,000 price tag? We like to look at ourselves as a, an instigator or an initiator of ideas. Sometimes these ideas aren't even being thought about as a production car, uh, but we throw them out there as an advanced concept and sit back and watch the reaction. If it's great, uh, it can really propel a concept to move forward quickly into a production car. From my personal perspective, it's a misstage in the process, and um, we'd love to see this as soon as possible. This vehicle has no future plans, but you know, I think this represents kind of a, an exciting kind of message for the brand, and I think this is the, the kinds of things that we can, we can hope to see from Toyota sometime soon. That might be sooner than you think, given the alliance between BMW and Toyota to build a next generation sports car. There's no plan at all to build it, but um, we like to sit back and we'll, we'll watch the reaction to it and uh, see how it goes and, you know, you never know. Every designer wants to design a sports car, and um, I don't think there's one designer that got into the business to design a minivan.